Hey guys, this is Mason Vasquez, the strategist, coming at you with my Drakari list for this Sunday's battle report. We have three patrols, uh, starting with the Black Heart Patrol. We have the Archon with Labyrinth Cunning, a Labyrinthian Cunning, and she's upgraded to a Super Archon, the Lords of Komoroth. We have the Drizar himself with his retinue of 9 EQI. I wonder what they're going to be in. Um, then we have two units of five Cabalite Warriors, Action Monkeys, and we have a unit of ten Cabalite Trueborn. Um, they are going to be, uh, upgraded, um, if, well, duh, I already said Trueborn. They got two Blasters, a Dark Lance, and a Grenade Launcher. We have a five-man unit of Scourges. One, two, three, four Dark Lances. Let's go to the Dark Technomancer Detachment, the Coven. That's my favorite. We have two homunculi with, uh, homunculus with liquefier guns. We have one, two, three units of racks, all with two liquefier guns each. I should be putting off some really nasty damage. We have the Venom with two splinter cannons and a uh, grizzly trophies. We have one, two, three raiders, all with Dark Lance, Shock Prow, and Grizzly Trophies. Um, then we have the Cult Detachment, my favorite, because it has her in it. The Super Succubus herself. Um, she is going to be taking um, the Cult Strife Relic. Um, the toxins giving her plus one strength plus one damage and she is taking a um, razor flail with uh, that lets her get d3 extra attacks and she rerolls all hits and then precision blows which is on sixes you take to hit you take mortal wounds um, the reason I took that combo is because I feel like it gives you the best mortal wound output um, but I really do also like the uh, Chardonnay Impaler with this combo. So she should be putting off 8 to 11 ish attacks and um, and sixes with rerollables. Uh, those are going to be mortal wounds, two damage, two mortal wounds each. So it should be a lot of fun. We have a that's a super succubus, obviously. So she gets all the shenanigans of the uh, consolidate away from units. We also have. 10, sorry, light fell. Uh, we have 10 blood brides with a chardon, uh, with the agonizer and a chardonnay impaler. Or a sh chardonnay um, impaler. <laughs> um, those guys are awesome. There's nine of them, probably going in a vehicle with somebody. And the Mord Veins agonizer upgrade on the Hecatrix makes it so people cannot fall back if they're in combat with her. We have a 10-man unit of witches, one Chardonnay, and uh, one set of Hydra Gauntlets. And, um, yeah, guys, that is, um, and of course, to round out, I wonder what's over here, and I want to talk about them. They're so cool. We've got the Reaver Jet Bikes. Um, those bad boys are 12-man strong, max unit, and they're going to be trying to fly over some stuff and do some more wins. I'm very excited to fan that combo. I'm really excited to see that combo play, I should say. But that should be it. Alright, guys. Uh, that is my Drukari list at 2,000 points. I cannot wait to battle on Easter Sunday. You guys keep battling out there, and you guys have a great day. This is the list I'm bringing to the upcoming game. Over here, I have a Cold Star Commander with two Fusion Blasters. I have a Shield Generator and a Drone Controller on it as well. So normally people go with Shield Generator and Triple Fusion Blasters. I went with just two for fewer points. And the mobility of this Commander lets me use Command and Control Node to buff the Riptide, so I won't be using it to shoot as much when I do that. And the Drone Controller lets me use the marker light drones in my list to put marker lights onto targets. 
the commander comes with two shield drones and there are these two white drones here that have basing. Next I have Commander Shadow Sun. Commander Shadow Sun comes with the dispersed fusion blasters. These are weaker and do deal fewer wounds but they have more shots so they're a choice for a take all comers list and and I would also use her potentially to use command and control node on the broadsides which means she would have to go up for shooting so in that instance having a weaker gun isn't really a downside she comes with her two special drones one of them gives a three inch fuel no pain 3 inch 6 up fuel no pain to all town sub units within 3 inches. The other one uh, allows me to designate one unit to reroll ones in the shooting phase uh, if that unit is within 12 inches of it. Up next is the Ethereal on Hover Drone. The Hover Drone lets him move further. The Ethereal himself has for elemental abilities, in each movement phase he can choose one, or for a stratagem he can use two. They provide 6 inch buff auras. Sense of Stone is one commonly used. It gives a 6 up funeral pain for infantry or battlesuit units within 6 inches of him. Storm of Fire is another one I use, and that lets a unit within 6 inches of him that has not moved to reroll ones to hit. Uh, and once again, that's limited to battle suits and infantry. Calm of Tides allows a unit to reroll failed morale saves. And Zephyr's Grace allows a unit to roll twice to advance and keep the higher dice result. In addition, all units within 6 inches of the Ethereal use his leadership for morale tests instead of their own morale. Or instead of their own leadership. Of those three HQs, the Code Star Commander is the Warlord. The Warlord trait is Strength and Believe. Belief. It's a Tau Sept specific Warlord trait. It gives the Commander a 5 up Fuel No Pain against Mortal Wounds. Over here, I have two units of Broadsides. In the back are Broadsides with high yield Missile Pods and Smart Missiles. They have advanced targeting systems which improve the armor penetration of all their weapons. This turns smart missiles from AP0 to AP1, which can be pretty nifty against certain targets. This is a unit of broadsides with heavy rail rifles. I took the relic on them to upgrade them to magna rail rifles. So it upgrades from strength 8 to strength 9. And it does D6 damage, but now it's D6 with a minimum of 3 damage. And as usual on a Dice roll of 6 to wound, it does a mortal wound on top of the regular damage. It's AP-4 and 60 inch range, so these guys are a decent long range threat. The units of broadsides each have 6 drones accompanying them. So here's these drones along the side. And here's this other unit of drones in the back. And over here I've got a devilfish as a dedicated transport. Their role is to put a unit of breachers near an objective or in a zone that lets them perform an action. And last of all, I have a unit of Vespid Stingwings. These guys can deep strike, so I can drop them on the board anywhere without spinning a command point to put them in reserves. They are infantry, so they can perform actions. They are not troops. So they do not have obsec, but their weapons are strength five, AP minus two, so they can potentially remove an obsec unit and um, help deny points to opponents that way. The broadsides with the magna rail rifles also come with smart missiles, and instead of advanced targeting systems, they have counterfire defense systems. So that lets them reroll hits in Overwatch. For my troop choice, I have four units of breachers. Three of them have two Markerlite drones with them, and those will be one of my sources of Markerlites. Here I have 
a unit of two tetras, they are another source of marker lights for my list. They each model shoots three marker lights, and um, they have uh, they also have guns that they can shoot as well. On top of that, uh, nothing special really. Um, they're vehicles, so they don't take the minus one penalty to move and shoot, which makes it easier to put marker lights onto targets. Oh, oh, oh.